Bum 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 bum. Just checked with Uncle Dominic. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Just Chat with Uncle Dominic. Um, here today, we'll be talking about training to think positively. So I have here with me today, um, Cass Cassandra from Australia. So say hi to Cassandra. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So today we'll be talking about training to think positively because we all know that um, there are so much negative thoughts in our head most of the times and in our lives as well. So we need to think positive as much as we can. So today, me and Cass, we're going to discuss about that. So first of all, let's have Cassandra introduce herself. So um, I'm Cass. I'm a 32-year-old mother of two. Um, I'm also a student at the moment studying a Bachelor of Business and Commerce. And um, I joined the LDS Church about four years ago, so I'm a pretty fresh convert. <laughs> All right, so you are a church member of the, the Latter-day Saints in Australia? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Um, how has that helped you in your life, like having religion in your life? I think it has uh, helped um, enhance me as a person. I think I had a lot of uh, similar values when I first joined the church, but I think it's helped me grow, especially in, in regards to compassion and forgiveness and just uh, learning how to live life with less judgment um, and treating people the way that Jesus would treat people. Okay. And loving everyone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I can see that a religion has helped you a lot in your life as well. Um, yeah. I would say so for other people as well. That some people feel like religion does not actually help. It's more like mm -hmm. trying to... It's like a business, some people would say. Like they take your money and then what do they give you? Nothing. Some people feel that. And so when it comes to that, what do you think about that? I think everyone's... Everyone has a spiritual need and... um. Like, it's, it's one of those needs that has to be fulfilled for you to be 100% happy, but different people need to fulfill that need differently. So they just have to find what works for them. Um, and if they're feeling that way about their church, then it's probably not the right place for them, and they need to find a different way to fulfill that spiritual need. Um, right, so you say so everyone has their own has a physical need and a spiritual need as well. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, I think to be truly happy in life, you have to fulfill that sp spiritual need somehow. Um, and I have some friends that they do it through positive thinking. That's their spiritual yep. need. Some people do it through religion. Some people do it through uh, practicing yoga. Like it, oh, it yoga. Just all depends on I the can't do yoga. Yeah. <laughs> what about people like me that I'm big and stuff and I can't do yoga? I know my wife does, but like I'm huge. So how does yoga help yeah. me if, if, I, if I can't do it? What do you think? <laughs> I think, again, it's a whole spiritual thing. It's it's individual to the person. <laughs> okay. All right, that's great. So, yeah. so for viewers out there who are as big as me, <laughs> try not to do yoga. You break your bones, maybe. <laughs> okay. So yeah. let's start with our quote for today. Like, um, th there's a quote that I want to work on, which is, I put it on my Facebook up here. It says, um, Cassandra can see, it, so I'll read it out for her. It says, positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Okay, again, positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Okay, yeah. so what, what are your thoughts about that, Cassandra? I'll, I'll just call you Cass, is that okay, Cass? Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Um, it's so true. Um, like, I very much used to be someone that uh, would do a lot of negative self-talk, and I think negative self-talk can really impact you and and stop you from doing things and being scared of trying new things. Um, but once I had flipped the script and started using more positive self-talk, um, yeah, I noticed that I was achieving more. I was, I was doing more of the things that I wanted to do in life because I wasn't putting myself down. I think we sometimes can be our own worst critics. Yeah, and, um, yeah, it's so true. Like if you talk positively, about yourself and you're like, yes, I can do this, you're more likely going to. Yeah, yeah the self-talk thing, right? It's like, 
you put ourselves down quite often. I think a lot of people does it. Like I do it sometimes. I actually, I I just did it yesterday. You know, it it was my my son's birthday yesterday, and I thought I did everything right, but then I felt like no, I did something wrong. And then what did I do wrong? I was like, oh, what a useless dad I am. And I was like, so all these thoughts keep coming in, you know. And so yeah, um, I had to let it. Like I tell myself, I need to let it out, but. Am I letting out the right way? And so, it's, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm a guy, so I tend to be physical at things. So I actually punch the wall really hard, try to, you know, and so yeah. that kind of self talk can actually. And then, well, anyway, so what happens was, it it occurred to me that I hurt myself while I'm doing negative thoughts. So immediately I try to calm myself down and tell myself that this is wrong. This is wrong, and I need to, you know. Put myself in the right mode again, but then it's difficult, mm-hmm. right? It is. It is. Um, and I think if we have moments where we do talk to ourselves negatively, that just makes us human. Everyone has those moments, but it's a matter of uh, not staying in those moments for right. long periods of time. But yeah, I, I, I tend to tell myself I shouldn't give myself too much excuses like i when my kids tell me an answer to whatever questions i have or things that they don't want to do and i feel like it's an excuse like i tell myself i shouldn't tell excuses if i cannot do it i should be saying no i can't do it <clears throat> but i should be say, yes i will try and do it you know things yeah. like that and trying to put into you know make training my mind to be more positive um, one of the things that I mentioned to a, a few of the guests earlier, uh, before, was that the reason I do this show is to put more positive out there. But it doesn't mean that I'm perfect, right? I'm not perfect myself. So I'm, when I put things out there, I feel like I'm telling it to myself as well. And then yeah. I'm trying to remind myself as well, like, these are the things that I should be doing. And if I'm not doing them, so I should, like, realign my life, like you said, right? Um, like try to find a spiritual need to myself as well as physical need as well. So uh, for me, going to church, uh, reading the scriptures, you know, things like that can help as well. Um, but I do feel like sometimes we need more, more, you know, ways or outputs or platforms to enable us to, uh, to seek help, I guess. I think sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like um, we, we need to seek like professional help with certain things. What do you think about that? Like trying to think positively by seeking professional help. Oh, I think it's needed, um, especially in some instances. Um, I know for myself, um, maybe three years ago now, I was pregnant with my daughter and I had really, really severe prenatal depression. Like it was bad. About the four month mark of the pregnancy, I just, I didn't want to keep trying. I was like, I'm done. And I spent maybe four days sitting in the shower each evening, just crying and praying and trying to get through those really horrible moments. And uh, in the end, on the fourth day, came out of the shower and I'm like, tomorrow I'm going to go get professional help because I can't keep going like this and I'm going to make a really bad decision if I keep going in this way. Mm. And um, so the next day I went to the doctor, made my mental health plan with them. And over here, um, you get 10 free uh, therapy sessions. Um, right, okay. Through a psychologist, like through our Medicare. And, um, and you get to so pay I the 11th to... one. You get 10. Yeah, you get 10. You get 10. Um, you have to get assessed halfway through to make sure that it's doing what it needs to for you. Right. But... Um, like it came in really handy for me to be able to make it through the pregnancy. And then I also had postnatal depression. So I got more counseling through that. So I think a mixture of that professional help, as well as the support that I got from the gospel and praying and um, surrounding myself with positive people who loved me made all the difference for getting through that really tough period of time. And it, it's hard to get as low as I got. But I got there. Okay. <laughs> and somehow I got through. So. So, so to yeah, our viewers out there, um, Cass just mentioned, I summarized a little bit. She said, one, professional help, right? And two, surround mm-hmm. ourselves with positive people. So I think that's important mm-hmm. as well, right? Professional help, 
uh, surround ourselves with positive people. But here's the thing that I figured, I, I think that I should mention, because when, when people get into depression mode, right, mm -hmm. they don't want to admit that they have depression. And sometimes mm -hmm. they, you know, how can they get out of the rut to just seek professional help? I mean, if, like for me, I have depression, I do know that. And, but sometimes I don't want to tell people I have that. And I don't want to seek mm -hmm. help because I feel like what, you know, I, I, just like that. So like you did it. Mm -hmm. you, you stepped out of your circle and you went and asked for help. So h how did that happen? Like what pushed you to do for that? For me, it was uh, the strength of, um, that I got from prayer because okay. I very, very strongly prayed just nonstop for those four nights in that shower um until it kind of talked me off the ledge and gave me the strength to go and ask for help but asking for help is hard like you're not imagining it it there's a big stigma around it like you think if you go and ask for help it must mean that you're weak or or like showing some vulnerability that you don't want to show and even the first couple of therapy sessions can be really tough too mm -hmm. like because you have to give all of your background information that could have caused your problems right right so sometimes you get out of the therapy sessions and you feel like you've been hit by a truck and you're just emotionally drained but the blessings that you get from taking that step are totally worth it um i think that for me and and uh with friends that have had mental health issues as well that i've helped um you have to want to do it yourself. You have to take that first step. No one else is responsible for it. Um, no one else is responsible for your mental health except for you. And if you don't want the help, no one can force you to get the help. I found that as well. Like there were times before I had asked for help where people were like, you, you should really see someone. And it was almost getting a bit naggy, but um, I refused until I was ready. Right. It's I, not until you make that choice that you can actually make the change. So it's just us. We have to we have to take the step ourselves, right? There's no one no one else can help mm -hmm. us, right? I yeah, I agree to that. Like there's <clears throat> it's it's all onto what our mind thinks. So we you have to push it out and try to take the step like you said like you said, because no one else can help us, only we can do it ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. I think there's a like you said a stigma. So if I compare it between Asian culture, because I'm I'm Asian and so I live mm -hmm. in an Asian country right now and I feel like um the differences the main difference is like in Asian country right now we, we tend to not to label a lot of things. Like for example, like you said you have prenatal depression, postnatal depression. I mean in in where I live right now, no one thinks about depression like that. You know, people yeah. think that, oh, you're, you're just having some doubts. That's okay. You know, you move on. And then after yeah. that, after you give birth and whatever, and then you have depression as well from the life and, you know, stress. And then people are like, oh, it's okay. It's just after birth, you know, just move on. I mean, it's yeah. no one wants to label it in, in Asian countries. And like you said, it makes us feel vulnerable. And I feel like for mm -hmm. Asians, like for me, I'm going to talk about myself. I feel like... If I label myself, I give myself like vulnerable, be more vulnerable, like mm -hmm. show my weakness. And Asian people tend to not like to show weaknesses. And I feel like yeah. um, pride is an issue as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's that's a problem. So and how can we overcome that? What do you think in, in your area? I think doing what you're doing, like talking about these issues and... Um, like educating people that these feelings are very valid. Like people are, if they're feeling depressed, they're obviously depressed about something and something that feels big to them is big because it's big to them. Like it shouldn't be something that should be pushed down or ignored. Um, so when we talk about these things, it normalizes it more and gives people more courage to take that step and seek help. Like if they see someone else get through it, um, they might they might think, oh, okay, maybe I could get through it too because they were in a similar spot to me two or three years ago. So look how far they've come. I think um, just doing your show and all about positive thinking is a really important step. 
No, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, that's that's how I feel. Like I I need to put it out there because um, as I look, there are a lot of shows out there, and not many talks about positive. I mean, there are people talk about positive life change and to help them be more successful in their life. I mean, I like all that to be more successful, but at the same time, I want to approach in a way that you know, regular people like me or regular people out there like. Success is there, but it depends on how we define success again. And you also mm -hmm. like, how can we get that far if we still don't? If we feel like it's too far away, like you know, there is differences in that. Like, um, well, let's talk about in church as well, right? You see, like the stake leaders, the district leaders, all, all their leaders out there, and they're like, wow, they're so spiritual. Like, I'm so lowly. How can I be as spiritual as them? You know, like. Mm -hmm. Most members, I think, will feel like I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not doing enough, and so, like you said, this is self-talk, and this is making yourself mm -hmm. feel negative. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I did this show. It's mainly because so people like us, regular people, can actually have a way to say things out, voice it out, and maybe listen to it, and then you know break out of the shell. I think that's important because um, depression and self and negative things in our life tends to make us i mean we're not gonna say not conscious about it i mean we are conscious about it ourselves we know that these things are happening with our life and trying to move forward out of it is difficult i mean it, it needs more output so i feel like doing this show um gives a little bit of output out there so someone else like you know can actually look at it right what do you think? That's it. Do you think that's that's that right? Yeah, that's right. And <sighs> like when you are depressed too, it's really hard to look outside of yourself as well. Like everything is very much about you, you, you. Um, like I feel so horrible right now. Why is my life like this? It's like you become a bit of a victim. Um, yeah. In your own mind, in your own mind, and other people don't see you that way, but inside that's what you're thinking and sometimes like i found when i was struggling with depression it made me not a very good friend as well and i hated yeah, that that's the I thing, kind of right yeah on being a good friend but i was so busy worrying about how i was feeling i wasn't noticing when my friends were struggling around me um and i think that was a motivation for me because friendship is something that i really value and being a good friend and being there for people, but I wasn't capable of it because I wasn't taking care of myself. So yeah, so it's um, like we we feel depressed and we make ourselves more depressed and <coughs> mm -hmm. you know make I don't know there there are no enemies anywhere, but we we make enemies out of nowhere. You know they just <laughs> appear. Poof! Oh, yeah. you hate me. I was like, no, I don't. But yeah, you know yeah. that's what it is. It feels like. I'm making more enemies. Like, where where do they come from? I'm just making them. Like, oh no, yeah. my computer hates me. Arr! And then you get frustrated. You know, uh, yeah, self talk. I ha I hate this, right? Yeah. Small interactions with people, and you just analyze it over and over in your head afterwards, and you're like, I don't think that they liked what I said. And then it just keeps going over and over in your head, and <laughs> they must hate me now. Oh, I my know, goodness. right? I'm not going to be able to show my face anymore because they hate me so much. Like and, you just talk yourself into these things. And then when you feel so. feel negative, and then when you go to you go to any social event and someone says something good about you, they they actually mm -hmm. say something good, and then your head is like, no, they're not. They're yeah. saying this. I'm like, ah, oh, it's like. I actually cry if people right? get too nice to me. If people say anything too complimentary, I start crying. And I, I think it's because sometimes I don't feel like that I'm worthy of those compliments. Right, and that's okay. just the left through the bits of the depression, like not seeing myself as as being worthy of praise. <laughs> I, that's that's so, it. I think we everyone has good things. I mean, we all have good things. It's just how we say it or how we see it. I mean... I, yeah, you know, it's terrible. I mean, okay, so yeah. So anyway, so my profession is, I'm, I'm an educator, right? So I teach in schools and I see this in young children as well. And I feel like, oh, what can I do to help them? Like, I'm a, not a professional counselor. 
Um, it's there already on their kids. Um, and I see this in parents as well. When parents have it and I look at their kids, their kids have it as well. I mean, how can mm -hmm. you tell them to be more positive, to try? It's very difficult. Like, what about you, Cass? And what is your profession? I, 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 didn't, I haven't asked that yet. Oh, I'm a student. Okay, um, you're a student right now. So uh, I plan on majoring in human resource management. Okay. Um, my background, though, is in childcare and retail. Um, so very much working with people. <laughs> retail, right? So what kind of retail were you, were you doing before? Um, I worked in a lingerie store before. <laughs> or a clothes, right? People. Okay. Yeah, so... So I, I bet um, you see all kinds of people coming into your shop and, right? And do you see like, I don't know, depression from them or like clothes as well? Like I for me, like I love Spider-Man clothes, but if something happened to my Spider-Man <laughs> outfit, I'll be like, no, why? You know? And so... Well, I noticed it because um, when I, I was a bra fitter, so I would help fit the ladies for the right size that they needed. Right. Okay. Um, and... You could see the change in self-esteem when someone put in the time and effort to listen to them, to help them feel beautiful because they would get to wear the really nice stuff that they wouldn't usually get to wear. And and you would see the self-esteem in like a 10-minute, 15-minute bra fitting just skyrocket through the roof. Um, and again, it comes down to self-care. Like they took those 10, 15 minutes to themselves to go and get that right fitting bra and they felt amazing by the end of it and i would always feel really nice because i got to help them achieve that right so it was quite a rewarding uh job not not one that you would think would be rewarding but it was um i, I mean i don't know much you're... about bra fitting right but yeah, i, I do know. i would i would do say that that this is like customer service right if you if you give them great um i don't know not conversation chat or whatever input into their life i mean i bet they come back to you more and more again right i yeah, guess that's, that's it. it it's like and you can change their whole day if they're having a horrible day and you give them good customer service you can really you know make them smile and turn yeah. their day around that's it i feel yeah. it where i where i live right now in taiwan right so there's this thing about customer service i mean if you talk a little bit to the customer you say something to it they will come back to you, even if your food's terrible, if your, your, your business is terrible, they will come to you because you talk to them. And I feel like mm -hmm. we always search, uh, people always search for self-acceptance. And sometimes mm -hmm. we don't accept ourselves. And when we go out, like you said, go to the bra fitting, go wherever, and then <clears throat> when someone else showed acceptance towards us, we feel good and we want to come back and feel it more, mm -hmm. right? So, but it's I true. yeah, I but I feel like instead of doing that, we should be doing it ourselves already. We should build, mm -hmm. train our mind to think that everything is there. Like it's how we see things. Okay, it's true. Uh, there's and a, that's yeah. So go on, go on, go on. Uh, I was just gonna say that's what I've been trying to do this past year. Um, because I've been going through a big uh period of growth. Um. Because right. my partner and I, we have separated after eight years together. Okay. And I've got a lot of self-growth that I've got to do. Um, things that I don't want to carry with me in the next relationship. And part of that is the depression and anxiety stuff that came from the pregnancy. So, um, you know, I've been trying to learn how to validate myself rather than looking for external validation, not being dependent on other people. And I do that by um, taking myself on dates. So right, yeah. I date myself at the moment. I'll go out to dinner and watch a show by myself and um, buy myself flowers or chocolates and things because I'm a, I'm a romance. I, I'm a romantic. So that stuff's important to me. But I know I don't have to get I mean, it that's from it. other people. We have to love ourselves, right? We need to yeah. put ourselves out there. Like, I, this is a secret, but don't tell anyone. But I, I usually buy presents for myself as well. Like, my birthday's coming. Ah, <laughs> oh, I need to buy a present. No yeah. one's going to buy me one. No, I, want. I started I mean, doing that, buying presents for myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, 
There was something that I found. Um, I don't know if you're a TikTok fan or anything like I am. that. Or... You can look me up on yeah. TikTok, Uncle Dominic. <laughs> yeah, you can find me there as well. For all the viewers well, out there, the find me on TikTok. There we go. <laughs> one of the suggestions I saw on TikTok was um, a selfie challenge. So, like, oh, when challenge. you're going through a period of change and you're trying to learn how to love yourself, you got to get used to looking at yourself. So, like, taking a selfie every day. You don't have to share it. It's just for you. But you take the selfie and then you say nice things to yourself about the selfie. Like, oh, I like like that colour shirt that you're wearing or your eyes look really nice in this photo. And just, it feels weird to start with, but, like, it's good for the self-talk. Like, training exactly. yourself to exactly. see the good in yourself. Um, here's yeah. the, this is the very big thing about me. A long time ago, I would say when the first... Uh, social media started right when people start doing selfie i think that first time when i saw that i i hated it i was like i see all these young people with their cell phones standing in front of the shops just yeah i was like oh my gosh don't do that like i hate doing it yep. and <clears throat> i feel like man they love themselves so much all this talk about mm -hmm. it and then eventually i feel like no there is something to it i need to figure it out Yes, and I found out it actually makes you love yourself more, and which is good mm -hmm. because <clears throat> positive thinking, you have to think, you have to love yourself. You have to think that Nothing. everything about you is beautiful or wonderful or awesome. So that's how you mm -hmm. you do it. And so I think I brought it into my 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 school kids when I go teach at high schools and stuff. Um, they mm -hmm. they tend to see that oh, teacher Dominic is amazing. He has so much confidence. <clears throat> Where does he get it? I mean. I tell myself, <clears throat> I have confidence, but it's not that great. But for others, they see it to me. They're like, yeah, you have confidence. Where did you get it? How did you do it? Um, I told them, selfie. That's the first step. And so yep, and that's then it. eventually, you know, here I am doing streaming, talking about myself and talking to others. But I think that's also a step, like you mentioned. Right? We need to, yeah. I think we need to love ourselves. Like, um, Here's the thing. Many people don't see it that way. People feel like, you know, what's the point of wasting money to, to on ourselves? Like, buy flowers mm -hmm. for myself. What's the point? Like, the flowers will wilt away, you know. Buy chocolate. Mm -hmm. What's the point? It only makes me fat. You know, there's all this stuff that media has shown that if mm -hmm. we do this, we're wasting money. We're making ourselves feeling not so good. So, what are yeah. your thoughts on that? I think that... In relation to that, it's investing in yourself. Um, That's the word, you investing, like investing. Um, and I learned a lot from a book by Gary, I think his name was Gary Chapman, called The Five Love Languages. And Who is it again? Gary? It, Gary Chapman, I think it okay. was. Um, and the book's called The Five Love Languages. And there's physical, um, acts of service, uh, words of affirmation, uh, gifts, and another one but um anyways it's everyone's got a preference for their love language how they like to be loved and in the book it's in relation to being in relationships but the love languages work for yourself too so if you're a person that um oh quality time's the other one Very so if you're enough. someone that likes having quality time with your partner when you're trying to learn how to love yourself you need to have quality time with yourself um, so that's why I go out on dates. But if you were someone who your primary love language is gifts, buy yourself gifts and that's going to talk to you more and make you feel better than if you tried the other love languages. Like, because everyone's different. The, the same formula isn't going to work for everyone. So you've got to find the way that talks to you the most and what's going to help you grow the most. I, so, yeah, I I, I yeah. like the five things right I, I, that you mentioned from Gary Chapman. I need to look that up. Um, yes, quality time for ourselves. But some people feel like we spend too much quality time on ourselves, um, ignore our spouses or whatever. And so I feel like, yeah. But anyway, so let's not. I wanna don't wanna go too deep into that. But I do wanna say because I think there's a differences in culture. Like a lot. This the difference in culture is too much. Like. In Taiwan, or where I am right now, you know, and people feel like it's there. We know what we can do to be happier, you know, go out, but we don't because we are afraid. 
um, mm-hmm. you know, afraid to do to do things or afraid to try something different. What else in mm-hmm. in you know Western culture in Australia? I mean, people are different. Like for example, uh, <clears throat> I I was in Aust- I was in Australia a couple years back. Um, I was in where was I? Uh, yeah, I was in Gold Coast. That's right. I was in Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. I was on a beach. I was standing there with my family, you know, and then this lady with the dog, she just walked by. A very beautiful dog. I was looking at the dog, and the lady says, Hey, how's it going? I was like, Oh, it's great. So we had a chat for about five minutes. Uh, so, so the thing is, I don't know her. She doesn't know me, and we just talked about five minutes about random things. And, and then she left. Yeah. And my kids came to me, Do you know her? I was like, No. <laughs> Why did you talk to her for five minutes? I, I mean, that's normal. No, it's not. You talk to strangers. I'm like, so in Taiwan, like where I am, no one does that. If you see someone, you don't go and say hello. If when you do go and say hello, they're like, stop talking to me and they walk away. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It could be like New York. I never been to New York, but I heard that that's what people in New York do. And so, I don't know, right? So I think that's a difference in culture. It feels like I have problems I don't want to share it out. Mm-hmm. And so, but I think it's an environment as well. And so I feel like I've seen some um, Americans who come to Taiwan and they tend, they become like that as well sometimes. Like you go to them and say, hello, they'll be like, uh, I don't know you, please go away. Yeah. I mean, it's different. And so, I don't know. All right. So, Anyway, to, to go on that, I, there is a quote that I, I found and I really want to share it. And so, and it's about self-acceptance as well. And so I'm going to put it up here and I'll read it to you. It says, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Okay, again, mm-hmm. life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. So this is what I've, I've been trying to tell myself, self-acceptance. I need to accept what things that happen um, and I need to overcome it and, and move on. I mean, I shouldn't be looking at what people tell me or how many viewers I have or negative mm-hmm. things that people say to me. It's, but it's more about how I react to it. Should I be angry? Should I be, you know? So what are your thoughts on this? It is so true. <laughs> Um, I, I found that, um, as I've been a member of the church, how I react to things has definitely changed for the better. Um, especially now, like at the moment, my ex-husband and I, we've got a very good co-parenting relationship. Um, right. but I don't think it would be as good a co-parenting relationship had I not, join the church and learned about forgiveness and compassion and um, those sorts of things. I think I would have been spiteful, spiteful, spiteful. Um, And I can only imagine how different an effect that would have had on my children had I reacted differently to that whole situation. Like if I had have gone down the spiteful road and taken him to court and, you know, done all the uh, things that impact negatively on the kids, um, how how much uh, a tougher time they might be having through this whole situation. Mm-hmm. Whereas because I've kind of learnt how to chill out a bit more and to be more accepting of people and their differences, um, it's been smoother sailing. So we have been able to create that nice co-parenting relationship. We still have our trials, but because I react to those situations differently now, mm-hmm. um, we manage to always work our way through them. So and here's the thing: um, like when you said you you forgive them, right? And yeah. but some people will say I'm the victim, and then if I forgive them, I'm showing that I'm weak. The people will take yeah. advantage of me. Oh, we have to forgive for ourselves and our own mental health, right? So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. To, like, all that hatred and anger. Yeah. Oh, you're just gonna drive yourself insane. But it has taken a long time to get to that point. Like, it's not easy. But, um, yeah, I feel like forgiveness is a gift that we give to ourselves, not necessarily something that we do for the other person. Um, and for me, it's benefited my kids because I've been able to go through that process. And uh, I'm still going through it, but 
most of the way there. Yeah, so that, that's the thing that I've learned as well. Forgiveness is not actually about the other person. It's all about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> yeah. I, when I was in college, <clears throat> I had this friend, a really good friend. I mean, we're so like best friends. We do everything together. And then one day, he, he was I was letting him use my computer and he broke it. And then I came mm. back and I was like, I was mad. Like, like yeah. I blew up. And then I, you're not my friend anymore. Go away, you know. And so I never forgave him. I never forgave him for about more than mm -hmm. 10 years. I mean, it's always mm -hmm. been in my mind. Like, yeah. I wish that I, I had forgave him earlier and that I have, we have been, we would still be best friends and stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, and then so eventually I told myself, I need to go say sorry to him, um, you know, that I did this. And so I found him on Facebook a um, couple years ago, and then I messaged mm -hmm. him. And I said, yeah, we can be friends. And I don't remember what happened. I was like, what? I mean, he doesn't remember what happened. I did. So I had been putting yeah. the bad things on myself not on him yeah. so like, that's where i learned how you react i know yeah so that's how i learned forgiveness is not actually about the other person it's more about mm -hmm. myself and so that actually changed my thinking as well yeah mm -hmm. so yeah i like that yeah it's very true okay so i have one more quote um and this is from the scripture so i'm going to put it out there uh, this is in doctrine and covenants Section 121, verse 7. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, My son, peace be unto thy soul. Thine adversity and thine affliction shall be but a small moment. Okay, again. So, Doctrine mm -hmm. Covenant, section 121, verse 7. My son, peace be unto thy soul. Thine adversity and thine affliction shall be but a small moment. And also, President mm -hmm. Ezra Tev Benson said, uh, be of good cheer, right? Be of good cheer. And he says, because of that, Christ has overcome the world. And so, if he, if Christ has done that, I mean, we should be able to do it as well. So, in a way, mm -hmm. he's saying, God has great plans for us, and but we have to choose to live our life with positive attitude. And then, by doing so, our ability to deal with life's challenges will be strengthened. Okay. And so, and he says, yeah, if we turn to him, our hearts will change. And I, and you mentioned it that you you base your life on religion, and you join the church, and it has helped you to be where you are right now and improve your life. Mm -hmm. So, what can you yeah. say to viewers out there who haven't done that yet? I mean, do they necessarily have to join your church to be to have a great change? Or do they need to, like you mentioned, everyone has different uh, mm -hmm. personal things mm -hmm. that need to work on. Like everyone needs to have, find their own, uh, you know, different things that adapt to them. So what can we say to people like that right now? Um, I think that, like, like you just said, people need to find what works for them. Um, they've got to fill their needs in the way that they're comfortable with. I know that for me, when I was, when, because I'm a convert to the church, right? When I had missionaries knock at my door several times, I just sent them away because I wasn't ready to listen, and that wasn't right for me in that moment in time. But when I was ready to listen, you know, the change was great. Not everyone will be at that point, and they need to um, find the ways that speaks to them the most. Um, it's up to the individual to meet their own needs and if that is you know just doing lifestyle changes to be able to um live a healthier life you know cutting down on alcohol or or uh eating healthier or exercising that also can have a great impact on your mental health i have been exercising i'm getting yeah. fitter it doesn't I think. have to be religion <laughs> just what that's what i found was helpful for me but i know it's not going to be for everyone um if, if people came to me and wanted to ask questions about my religion, I'm always happy to answer it. But I don't, I don't tend to say it's the be all or end all for everyone. Like, cause I know that not everyone is there. I know. <laughs> that's, that's not right. where their mind is at. That's right. That's how yeah. I feel as well. Okay. So um, we're almost at the end of our session, guys. So, um, well, thank you, Cass, again. But before we go, I have to, I want to go through a few things here. 
And so first of the roundup that I'm thinking about, the first one is <clears throat> to, to train ourselves to be more positive, right? One, become mindful of our own thinking. Become mindful. Um, daily gratitude. Okay, This is effective. Mm -hmm. um, by saying good things to ourselves, self-talk. But self-talk in a good way, thinking good things, right? Um, second, yeah. the next one, the third one is observe the things that we have done in our day before we go to bed and think of all the good things that mm -hmm. we have done. Not the bad things, right? All the good things that we have done. And then when we mm -hmm. wake up, what can we do again to improve ourselves? Um, that's how I feel. Um, and then the last one that we mentioned a lot, quite a lot was invest in ourselves. Invest in yourself. Yeah. Um, positive thinking and self-talk. Okay. So yeah. here's what we're going to do. A short activity right now before we end. Okay. So I'm going to give a negative self-talk. And Cass, you are going to give me a positive self-talk on this. Okay? Okay. All right. So here, an easy one. It's too complicated. Uh, it feels hard now, but it won't last forever. <laughs> Great. Okay, one more. I've never done it before. It's too hard. <laughs> you can do anything if you put your mind to it. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the one that we have been... <laughs> <coughs> talking about oh no one likes me it's, it's, no one bothers to talk to me i'm amazing <laughs> this That's is the sure shortest stuff i'm amazing i can go straight to that i'm like i'm amazing if they don't want to talk to me that's their problem <laughs> okay so exactly yeah. again so self-acceptance <laughs> of what we are so let's end it today mm -hmm. um thank you Cass, mm -hmm. again for coming to the show and having a chat with me uncle dominic um if anyone has any questions Please, you know, look me up on YouTube, uh, Uncle Dominic Storytime, or at Twitch, and even Twitter, or TikTok as well. You can look me up in TikTok, <laughs> Uncle Dominic. And I want to see some TikTok dances, Dominic. Look me if up. there's no TikTok dances, it's not even a TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's end the quote again. Uh, one more time. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how we react to it. So train yourself, train your mind to be more positive, think positively. I'm trying it too, so you guys should do too, and our life would be much happier. Look at Cass. She's amazing, right? Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cass. <laughs>